Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of Final Fantasy IV. It's been a little while since we made progress here. Can someone remind me, I mean, us what happened? If I remember right, we left to a cave and met some old guy named Tella, but then he left after his daughter was caught up in a bombing incident. Meanwhile, this other guy named Edward joined us, and now we have to save Rosa with a sand ruby. Does that sound right? That is correct, and here is what we need to know for now. Edward is a bard, but honestly, he's not useful in battle. One of his main abilities is to hide, which does nothing for us, but it's not so bad as we won't really have him in our party after this episode, though he will still show up a few more times. Yeah, he just did like 11 damage to that goblin with his harp. I'm not even sure how that is supposed to hurt them. Unless his music is so bad, the enemies don't want to live anymore. That would be something. And he barely has any health to begin with. We recruited a small child to the party, and she has nearly twice the durability. This guy provides no value to our group. He's the Joe Biden of the characters we've encountered. Oh, I wasn't listening. Is that a good thing? Sure, let's go with that. So I wonder, are you all enjoying this game so far? I'll admit, it's still a lot to take in like it was before, but I think I'm understanding the game more as it goes on. Though all the rotating characters in our party seems a bit strange, like we had Kane until the end of the first video, Tella until the end of the last video, and from what I understand, Edward will be gone soon too. It's a little hard to get invested when so many just leave as they are introduced. Yeah, I'll admit, despite this game being one of my favorites, it is tough to stay focused on training certain characters uh, when they will just be gone so soon and without giving much away, this will be continuing on throughout the game, mostly in the first half. That is a good point though. On the other hand, it does bring a lot more variety to the game to make it more memorable. For example, in the first game, we just kind of went through it with the same abilities with the exception of higher level magic, whereas here, even the useless characters like Edward are at least more interesting in gameplay, especially on a story level as they have more motivation and development than the Warriors of Light, where they were just helping people around the world until they knocked Garland down. Also a good point. You can make the argument either way, but since Cecil is playable throughout the entirety, there is at least one who you can stay invested in without worrying if he will be leaving. I can also let you know when a character is here permanently or not. It's not so much a spoiler since the game has been out for so many years. That would actually be nice, as long as I know when Edward is gone, that makes me happy. Though I'm not thrilled about having someone like him on the team at all. Oh, come on, it's not so bad. He can sing songs for us and play his harp to distract us from the enemy encounters. That doesn't make any sense, though. It's not like we can actually hear his song since it's only used as a weapon. He is actually such a failure that you can't even hear his songs by design in the game. I'm throwing a party at Mar-a-Lago once Edward is gone, if anyone, even Joe, wants to come. That's enough, you two. It's time to focus up on the antlion. He is the boss fight for the cave though it's not much of a fight or a cave since we're already almost done and it's only been a few minutes. So how do you beat this guy? It's actually as simple as most other fights. You can use magic attacks against him just fine, though he will counter if you use a physical attack, though. Honestly, it's so weak that it's not even an issue if you do use them. Cecil takes like two damage, so it's basically just as easy if you were fighting a regular enemy. In the 3D versions of the game, the eyes were changing color to show what type of attacks you can and can't use, which is much better than this. And with Edward using the items we got earlier, he's actually proving himself almost halfway competent. Though it's not like anyone else can't use them, I assume this is the most we're gonna get out of him. Yeah, that sounds about right. This guy isn't even worth it for me to do my roast since his existence is already enough of a roast against him. Something we are going to be ending very soon as he should be finished soon. Hey, did the antlion use his counter on Rydia when it was Cecil that used an attack on him? That seems pretty weird. And what was that Chocobo thing that just came up? Ah, so for the counter, sometimes he will attack someone different as opposed to whom actually attacked him, which is a little weird, but Rydia can probably take a few more hits than Edward as he just uses items that we wouldn't otherwise use. And the Chocobo kick is a summon Rydia can use like Titan from earlier, though I don't think we'll use it again, as it's going to be overshadowed by way better summons later in the game. And just like that, the loser Antlion's defeated, but we still have the even bigger loser Edward to get rid of still, so it's a hollow victory. Well, now that we have the sand ruby, we can go back to Rosa and help her, right? Yes, and we will cut ahead a little bit so we can save some time traveling, though we will buy some other potions and supplies off screen. Now, it's most important to wake up Rosa as she is the white mage that will help heal us on our journey more than Rydia could. 
with her white magic. Well, that's nice for these two to get a reunion, but is it fine to just leave Edward here? I know I'm harping on him, no pun intended, but he really hasn't contributed anything besides using items on an already easy boss fight, so there's no point in keeping him here anymore. You know what, I'm going to agree with Donald on this. He really hasn't done anything of value, though. I disagree with calling him the Joe Biden of Final Fantasy IV, as that kind of sounds bad for me. Yeah, honestly, I'm sure he could have some plot importance later, but that's the only reason he could be kept around, even though Cecil and Rydia themselves have way more value and can take on the journey just fine without him. I would agree with that sentiment. This game seems good, but the uselessness of Edward is a point of contention against this part of the game. Wow, it's taken us so many hours of gaming together for all of us to unanimously agree on something, and it was about the uselessness of Edward. It took us a long time to get there, but we finally found unity. Well, I wasn't part of most of it, but I'm glad I can be here for this monumental occasion for the group. Trust me, we have had so many arguments mostly about golf, but it's really important for us to have this. Oh, wait, what is happening here now? Looks like the failure is back outside for some reason. I couldn't imagine what he would need to do. Not like there are many options in a desert he hasn't been to before. He is remembering Anna, you know that lady from the bombing in the last video that caused her to die? We only had her on screen for about a minute, so I can understand if you don't remember her. Maybe he's playing some special song for her. Not that she can hear it as she just vanished out of the air pretty quickly. Do people just do that in this world when they're hurt or something? From what I can tell, that sounds right. Barack is this fight one we should worry about. Not at all. It's one of the multiple scripted encounters where the outcome is the same, regardless of your actions. In this case, Edward is fighting a standard enemy that Cecil or Rydia would have no trouble with, but he struggles, since of course he does. Then Anna's ghost appears to him or something like that. That's kind of weird. I'd imagine it would take a little longer for him to get through a significant loss, but I guess literally the same night works too. But if he's not in the party for much longer, then I guess it makes sense why it would have to be fit here. Anna is leaving this world for a better place. I'm guessing she means anywhere that Edward isn't, so she's definitely right about that. Hey, if she's dead and still shows up as a ghost, can Rydia summon her in battles? Interesting question. While we make our way forward here, I will say that summons are actually taken from a specific location we will be arriving to, and it's not from the afterlife. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Wow, everybody agreeing on something and Joe thinking about things critically. Did we somehow arrive in a reverse version of our normal world where things work out so much better than normal? Unfortunately not. Otherwise, my catchphrase would be that worked perfectly except for the part that didn't, which was none of it. Hey, Barack, is this thing in the game important at all? Ah, yes. So this is a part of Rydia's development, mainly because the bombs that set the village of mist on fire scarred her for obvious reasons. So she needs to overcome that to melt the ice and progress. Wait, hold up, that makes no sense. Why is this ice here? This is the first time we've seen anything cold in this game, aside from Anna after the life left her. But it's only on this path? There is no other ice anywhere on the overworld map, or even on the screen right now. There's no reason why this should be cold other than to give Rydia a reason to use fire for the first time. I understand it's to help her development, but it would make more sense if there was more ice throughout the whole map instead of this one specific spot. Even if it was more than that, I'm sure we could use that hover ship outside or even one of those elemental items to melt it. Or just wait a while since it can't be that cold out here. Wow, go off, Ben. I didn't even think of that, but you're definitely right. Okay, yeah, I can't really defend that. It's one thing to have her get past an issue that she experienced, but this was kind of a sloppy way of doing so. It seems like that's a trend with Edward getting peace with Anna's ghost and Rydia using fire now. A little off topic, but Barack, I'm glad you're getting through this whole battle without going nuts over the bombs here. You didn't do so well the past few times. Yeah, that was pretty weird the past few times, but you are definitely improving on that. I hope we'll make it through the rest of the video without any issues like that. Don't worry, guys, I'll be fine. We're going to pick up some optional items here. This is not required for us to go through, but I do want to show off some areas and items if they're not too far out of the way. That does make sense, though. I don't think it will make much of a difference to us since I'm guessing we won't even be using most of these items we get, if any. You are right, but for those who aren't as initiated in the game as I am, it is useful to know when there are interesting things to find. Hey, I've noticed we haven't really talked much about the battles for a while since I think the antlion fight in any great detail is the game just going to stay pretty easy to where we won't even mention the battles. Honestly, I'm not sure. The game is pretty easy, especially when I'm playing it, so I wouldn't doubt if it becomes too easy to really bring up all that often. Hold up there. 
Barack, don't get too confident. We all tend to do that in golf matches, and most of us end up being wrong. If you stay like that, then you'll get too full of yourself and start to fail. Nobody asked you, Joe. I am doing perfectly fine by myself. I am capable of playing the entire game without difficulty and explaining the intricacies at the same time, so I know I can do these things without issue. Unlike you, where we would be here for six hours in the mist cave if you were playing it. Well, where did this ego come from? Joe is right, you're getting too full of yourself and you're going to lose focus and fail if you keep it up. This seems to be a scripted battle since it's a new character. So I think he's actually okay right now, but you are right that he is getting too far over his head. Wow, spoken like a true facts and logic expert. I was about to mention that, but you're almost at my caliber of intelligence and detail analyzing. Oh great, now it's happening to him too. We were doing pretty well together, but it seems like we're faltering at the halfway point. Relax guys, everything's going to be fine. There is no need to worry about me right now. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. There's a bomb ahead of you and you know how you get around those. Yeah, I'm with Joe on this, Barack. I don't think this is going to go well. We're about to find out. Oh no, it's the mom bomb. I knew this was coming, Ooh, but I thought I could prepare myself better for this. We're not doing too well, but I guess I've heard worse. Okay, let me see if I can hold myself together enough to explain the battle. Yo, yo, basically, you just keep out attacking like normal, and then it would blow up after a while, so be sure the character health is up. What is it with you and bombs anyway? This seems pretty weird of a reaction. It seems as though most of us have an adverse reaction to certain events, such as Joe going nuts whenever a dancer or children appear on screen, which is incredibly concerning. Then there is Barack, whenever high concentration of bombs appear. Though smaller ones don't seem to have the same impact, then I had it happen in one of our recent golf games when I was losing a lot. I don't think you or Donald have had that issue yet, though. Guys, it's an even larger bomb than before. <laughs> Barack, what is wrong with you? This isn't even a hard battle. <laughs> Barack, we're going to need you to pull it together, otherwise we will never win at this rate. It's happening. The bomb is exploding into even more bombs. Oh! I think I speak for everyone and that we're all going to need long amounts of therapy after this battle is over, since aside from the easiness of the fight, nothing is going well. Uh, just a few more bombs and then it's over. Okay, I am making the executive decision to skip ahead as nothing entertaining is happening with five bombs and Barack needs to be normal sooner. You know what, I, I think you're right. It's what's uh, best for the group, so thank you for skipping ahead. <laughs> All right, are you finally done so we can move on with the rest of the game? Yes, I'm all right now. Sorry about that, guys. I knew it was coming up and I thought I could hold it in, but evidently I couldn't. What's important is now you're focused back to the game. And since you are, can you tell us who this guy is and how he's important to us? Oh, yes. So this is Yang. He's a monk who specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, though can equip various claws to do more damage. He can use a kick move to attack each enemy at once for lower damage or focus to power up a physical attack. Soon we will be in the castle of Fable where he resides. Another new party member. I think that's two in one session since I think Edward joined us at the end of the last one. Is this Yang guy gonna be like Edward or is he gonna be of use? Based on the battle with him alone and against the bombs he seemed to hold up quite well, he was actually capable of fighting unlike Edward, so perhaps he won't be a complete failure. Yeah, don't worry, you're really gonna like him. He will provide us a lot of help quite soon as we'll have to make it over to Fable soon, though not much interesting happens right now. Ooh, does that mean I can tell one of my stories in the meantime? That is definitely not what he meant at all. Okay, fine, but later I'll give one. I'll leave you all in suspense for a few more minutes then. What do you mean in suspense? I am not going to be predicting what your story is, and I hope you end up not remembering to tell it later. Ooh, come on, the stories aren't that bad. At least they're not as bad as Barack's insanity over bombs. No, I could have been way worse, even though I wasn't at my best. It wasn't even too bad, I don't think. It, it definitely was that bad, and I implore you to seek psychiatric help if you continue to react that way for bombs whenever they show up. I'm not sure what causes that, but there is for sure a problem. Fake news anyway, this is Fable. We could go to the king, but there is some exploring we can do in the meantime that will help with getting more items. Not that we would really use them anyway, but I guess that's good to know. The king can probably wait for us a little while. We've accomplished so much each episode that we'll get done whatever he needs us for. Well, it looks like we're in the chambers, but he isn't here. But now I know who is here. Uh, yeah. Seriously, uh, yeah. Dancer, I have been waiting for this again. Wait, hold up, why is it a guy? <laughs> No, this is not what I wanted. I wasn't expecting you. Okay, what is wrong with you people? I thought it would be a lady the whole time, but it couldn't be again. 
Barack, please just tell us something about the game so we don't have to listen to Joe. This is all falling apart as soon as we got to the mountain. Ah, uh, yes, so cutting ahead to the king's throne room, Baron is going to be attacking Fable. So if we are able to stop them, then they cannot take the crystal hidden behind this room. That's essentially what is going on here. Rydia and Rosa will be doing something else, which means it's just gonna be Cecil, Edward, and Yang. Hey, Joe, I hate to ask this, but can you tell one of your stories just so we know you're relatively coherent once again? Ah, uh, yes, so there I was doing my study of dinosaurs where I was trying to figure out how to clone them for no particular reason, and then my friend Uglier Joe found it. If we took the mosquitoes hidden inside amber, we would have the contained blood of dinosaurs intact, and we could clone them. I did, and then opened up a theme park place called Jurassic Park. Some people told me it was dangerous and that we were standing on tops of shoulders of scientists who did the real work. And just because we could have doesn't mean we should have, but I was eating a popsicle during that time, so I wasn't too focused. Some dinosaurs got out. I think one of them ate uglier Joe, and then we decided to never open it up again until later when we realized there was a lot of money in it. The end. Okay, wait up a moment, Joe. That was just a retelling of the book and also movie Jurassic Park. That obviously was not something that you did. Let's remember that Joe is pretty old, so this is one of the more likely stories out of all the ones he has told. Though him being a scientist does put that credibility to question. And actually, George, did you say that there was also a book? I wasn't aware of it. Yes, there was a book, I believe, by Michael Crichton, which was later adapted by Steven Spielberg. The book and movie are very similar, but the beginning of the book is more about how the dinosaurs were cloned, along with the idea of turning it into both a zoo and theme park-like attraction has the structural problems of both and the movie doesn't quite go into as much detail about those parts while the rest of it is fairly close to the book's events. Though later movies will go and make up their own storylines past the original book and its sequel, The Lost World, Jurassic Park. Well, I didn't know I had a book and movie based on my experience, that must be pretty cool. Who would have known? Joe, you didn't have a book and movie made about your experience not cloning dinosaurs, but George, I'm glad you mentioned it, I think a fair amount of people didn't even know it was based on a book and just know about the movie. I'm sure at least a few people learned that just now. Yeah, it's something that I think most people know, but I can't be certain there are other movies based on books that aren't as close to the source material, such as World War Z, which basically was completely different. It's always interesting how different adaptations decide to use and not use different aspects of things they're based on. I can only imagine that there's going to be people learning that World War Z and Jurassic Park are actually based on books by watching political figures play a game released on the Super Nintendo. That is a pretty weird thing to happen these days. And strangely enough, is even more entertaining than what's actually happening in the game, as it's just battles one after the other with two decent fighters and Edward. Of course, Edward has to fall behind and make us fight another battle because he's a useless failure and should have died in Damsian instead of Anna. She would have made for a better party member at this point. Honestly, these battles are not too difficult. The only annoying part is there's nowhere to save in case you do somehow lose against them, other than that it's rather easy to make it through just fine. I would have asked to focus on the game earlier, but I think the other discussion was a better use of time at this point. Hey, it's Kane. He's been gone since Mist was separated in that earthquake. I'm glad he made it out alive. But why does he want to fight us all of a sudden? I don't know, but I'm not sure if we can win too easily. If he can jump like he did before, as enemies couldn't hurt him before, but now he is the enemy. That is right, but there isn't anything to actually worry about since this is another scripted fight where, for story reasons, he has to defeat us. Even if we somehow leveled Cecil to a level where we could beat him, that wouldn't change anything. Have you actually tried that out yourself to know that no, I just heard about that online, and I have no reason to doubt it, as it would mess up the game story. If you somehow did beat him, and I didn't find any reason to try leveling up Cecil to a really high level, especially with something that will come up next time that I won't spoil for you all. Oh good, I'm glad there's something to look forward to. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm not sure either, but more importantly, who is this guy coming in the room? Looks like his name is Golbez, but I'm not sure if we've heard much about him, if anything, by this point. Whoa, that attack just knocked two people out in one shot. One of them was Edward, so that isn't a surprise, but that shouldn't have gotten Yang as well. And now they're getting the crystal. He is even taking Rosa too, but I'm not really sure how that works exactly unless he is teleporting her somewhere. I wonder why Kane has become an enemy and is working with Golbez all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't know, but this must be pretty bad. I'm guessing them having the crystal isn't going to be good at all 
though I'm not sure what they or even we would do with it. I think they have the one from the beginning of the game as well, so that would make two or even three if they have one of their own beforehand as well. That is good thinking. In the first Final Fantasy game, our characters were looking for the crystal to save the world, but I never thought about what would happen if someone bad was on the same quest. It looks like we might find out soon enough. I wanted to be sure you all could watch that scene without my input to see what happens for yourselves. A lot of these questions will be shown soon enough, but we're going to have to wait for future parts to see what that entails. Nothing else major will be happening with battles for now, mainly just planning on what to do next. Ah, very good. I have to say the game is getting better when we can actually focus on certain characters without so many being introduced and leaving, unless it's effective, like with Golbez, where he leaves an impression the very first time and makes us wonder what kind of a person he is. I think I met a guy named Golbez recently, though he couldn't shoot lightning at all. He might have been the White House delivery driver for my popsicle order. He comes around once every few days to replenish the supply. I doubt that's his name, but the rest of it is the most realistic story you have ever told up to this point. Hey, before this ends, Barack, you did a great job this time, except for you falling apart during that bomb fight. Your gameplay was well done, and I'm excited to see what is coming next. Yeah, I hope that bomb thing doesn't keep going, but otherwise you did well, and hopefully it won't be another month until the next part. Don't worry, there should be no more bombs next time, and I don't think any dancers, if I remember right, so we should be okay. And yes, it shouldn't take another month this time. That's the goal for now, at least. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, people.